Good day everybody. Welcome to my course on ASME B31.3 for a pipe stress engineer. We all know that ASME B31.3 is very important for all process piping engineers who wants to design their piping systems based on the code ASME B31.3. And as you can see from this image, that the latest ASME B31.3 when I am recording this is 2022 edition. I mean, still today, the latest edition of the code ASME B31.3 is 2022, which is the revision of the earlier code ASME B31.3 edition 2020 and the name of the code is ASME code for pressure piping. So all pressure piping mainly used in process piping industries are designed based on ASME B31.3. The main topics that I will be covering in this specific course are first what is ASME B31.3 then why is ASME B31.3 important for piping stress engineers? Yes, why we always say or you must have heard somebody saying that you should learn or read the code ASME B31.3 for performing proper stress analysis. So what are the reason why it is so important that every piping stress engineer should learn or should read ASME B31.3 and you all whenever you have started reading the code you might have seen that it is a huge book more than 500 pages and reading is not at all easy from one point you are going to study then it will be telling you to refer to some other point and when you are going to that point again it will be saying it to come back to some other point and it becomes always confusing to read and understand the code ASME B31.3. So in this specific module, I will try or I will help beginner piping stress engineers to learn what are the main important points that they should learn before starting their stress analysis journey. Then in the next section, I will be covering what are the scope of ASME B31.3 means what are the topics that ASME B31.3 addresses, what are the piping systems that it covers, gives guidelines, then exclusions of ASME B31.3, what are not covered under ASME B31.3 guidelines. Then reasons for piping stresses as per code. What are the main reasons that stresses are generated in a piping system? What are the causes of those stresses? Then material allowable stress. So to qualify any piping system within a limit, there should be some allowable stress that is dependent on material. With change in material, this will be changing. So we will be learning or we will be knowing how code calculates the material allowable stresses so that you can use in your stress analysis. Then various types of stresses as per code. What are the various types of code as per uh, various type of stresses that code defines? For example, sustained stresses, what are occasional stresses, what is expansion stresses, etc. Then two famous terms that is always used in all the equations that we will be learning from ASME B31.3, SC and SH. We will be learning these two terms, what this signifies. Next, pipe thickness calculation. We will be learning briefly how to calculate the pipe thickness. And you must be aware that pipe thickness is very important because if pipe thickness is not proper, then there is no meaning of pipe stress analysis. It will automatically fail. So thickness must has to be sufficient so that you can perform the next stages of analysis. Then reinforcement requirement. What are the clauses or criteria to understand whether the piping is has sufficient strength or you have to give or provide more additional reinforcement. So those we will be learning. Then code equations and allowables. Then what are the 
equations for different types of stresses that code provides stress engineers and also what are the allowable values to limit our calculated stresses or code stresses within those allowable limits then one important term stress intensification factor or sif what is that we will be learning and from where we will get these values then cold spring what is that we will also be learning then reducing piping stresses what are the steps that we can follow to reduce stresses in a piping system that is generated because of certain kind of loads and finally we will be looking or having a brief about hydrostatic testing so these are the main points that i will be covering or rather i will be describing in this complete course here you can see that one refinery piping image is showing and you can see from this image itself that how critical the piping system could be there are so many lines connected to various equipments and all those equipments routing as well as supporting has to be proper and that will be verified during stress analysis only when you will be using various code equations to calculate the stresses and then we will be comparing those with the allowable values those are also again given by the codes and to and finally to judge whether we will be accepting that or we have to make certain kind of changes so that the code stresses become within allowable values now who should attend this course so from the previous slide itself you can understand that this course is highly beneficial for all piping stress engineers so professionals who are piping stress engineers specifically beginners they must attend this course because without taking this course or without learning this some of the points that i am going to describe in this course if he starts the pipe stress analysis journey using software then he may be having so many doubts during his stress analysis process then professionals who are interested to learn the background equations of pipe stress analysis as i told that i will be explaining the background equations by which we calculate sustained stress by which we calculate expansion stresses so all those equations i will be explaining in this module then piping engineers who want to familiarize themselves with various code equations used by the software packages during pipe stress analysis as a piping stress engineer you must be aware ever that there are various stress analysis softwares that are available in the market some of the reputed ones are caesar 2 software start prop software auto pipe software k pipe software roar 2 so these type of various kinds of uh, softwares are available so you can familiarize yourself the background equations based on which these softwares calculate the stresses that are generated in the piping system so if you are want to learn those then you should take this course then to help piping stress engineers answer some of the questions asked during various interviews related to pipe stress analysis and asme b31.3 so by taking this course you will be learning certain points that in interview people usually ask then objective of the, this course what is the main objective of this course the main objective of this course is to explain the required pipe stress analysis contents of the process piping bible asme b31.3 in an easy to understand language asme b31.3 it is known as the bible of process piping so everything what is required whatever is required for starting from your design till commissioning everything is mentioned in the code it gives all the guidelines and requirements for designing fabrication inspection and testing of the piping system then piping stress engineers will be finding it easier to understand the code equations and concepts behind it so this is the main objective of this course to explain the details in a easy to understand language now what is asme b31.3 
So ASME B31.3 is a code. Now, before I describe what is there in the code, let's understand what is a code. Code gives a set of rules that are designed as widely accepted principles endorsed for industry adherence. So it gives a set of rules that are widely accepted and it is expected that every piping system should be designed based on certain codes. These guidelines are established to promote safety, quality or other advantages. So all codes have the same aim to ensure safe and quality, reliability. So safety, quality and reliability, all these are ensured by application of codes. Again, codes are not detailed ones. They tell us to accept or to design certain parts based on some standards. So code and standard is not same. Standards is often described as a more detailed elaboration delving into the specifics of meeting a code. So code will be referring to the standards and those standards will be dedicated to a certain piece of equipment or element which will be more detailed one, in-depth ones. While a code outlines what needs to be done, standard guides how to accomplish it. So this is the basic difference between a code and standard. So ASME B31.3 is a code that provides requirements for the design, construction, testing and maintenance of process piping system. The code is published by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. That's why the short term ASME is used and is titled as process piping. It is widely used in the chemical, petroleum, petrochemical and related industries. The requirements in ASME B31.3 covers aspects such as material, fabrication, assembly, erection, inspection, testing and operation of process piping systems. The code includes guidelines for piping systems that carry fluids such as water, steam, oil, gas and chemical as well as high pressure gases and cryogenic fluids. So it is applicable for a range of fluids. Then ASME B31.3 specifies the minimum design and construction requirements for piping systems and it is intended to ensure the safe and reliable operation of process piping. Compliance with the code is typically required by regulatory agencies and is often a contractual obligation between companies involved in the design, construction and operation of process piping systems. And as I already informed in my first slide that the latest available edition of the code when I am recording this course is ASME B31.3 2022. Now, importance of ASME B31.3 for piping stress engineers. So why should piping stress engineer learn or read the code? ASME B31.3 is important for piping stress engineers because it provides the guidelines and requirements for designing and analyzing process piping systems. So ASME B31.3 is basically synonymous with safety and reliability. 
all the required data that is required for the designing a safe piping system starting from material selection design guidelines inspection testing requirements fabrication and maintenance guidelines etc all are available in the code so all piping engineers should read or understand asme b31.3 piping stress engineers are responsible for ensuring that the piping system can withstand the loads and stresses that they will be subjected to during the normal operation as well as under abnormal or upset conditions or even certain occasional events like earthquakes and during thermal expansion asme b31.3 provides the necessary information on material selection design fabrication assembly inspection testing and maintenance of the process piping system it is the primary code used in the united states and all other countries for piping design and construction and it is recognized globally as a standard for process piping system by following the guidelines and the requirements of asme b31.3 pipe stress engineers can ensure that piping systems are designed and constructed to be safe reliable and efficient compliance with the code is also often required by regulatory regulatory agencies and failure to comply can result in costly legal and safety issues so that is the also one of the reasons that stress engineers should understand and read asme b31.3 furthermore piping stress engineers need to be familiar with asme b31.3 in order to perform accurate and reliable stress analysis of the piping system the code provides the necessary input data and formulas for calculating the stresses and loads that piping systems will be subjected to and it outlines the procedures for evaluating the results of stress analysis so hope by now you understand that why piping stress engineers should learn or understand asme b31.3 that's all for this introduction module thank you happy learning